Welcome back everybody and today we're going to be tearing apart the heads of the beetle and sort of having a look at what sort of condition it's all in under there. So in the last video you saw how the engine was, we gave it a good clean and uh, we got it all ready, torn down pretty much to the point where we we're ready to take the heads off, oil drain, that sort of thing. Uh, now we're going to be popping off the rocker covers, um, taking off the heads and uh, going to see how it went from how it was in the last video to how it is now, sleeping under a sheet and strewn across a workbench. So this is absolutely fantastic news, as you can see in there, everything looks absolutely pristine. That's quite surprising actually. Um, I'm assuming this hasn't been messed with very recently, or I'm sorry, this has been messed with pretty recently, and uh, it's, it's in really good condition. I was expecting to see lots of dirt and gravel and crap under here, but this is looking really nice. So you can see here in the rock cover where the previous owners crushed an o-ring in there when he needs to put this breather in. Um, so this I can sort out, I can find a, a, a washer for it or make some sort of gasket for it that's a bit more suitable than an o-ring because it's obviously just smushed it out the side there. Um, but yeah, it looks really clean, really nice. I'm quite surprised actually. So I've got all of the push rods out and uh, got them over here labelled, so I've got one, two, three and four and I know that this top side is the one that was poking up and this bottom side is the one that was down in the engine. So when I put it back together, I know where they go. Next step, I've got to uh, loosen these nuts off, so there's one, two, three and four inside here and then there's one, two, three and four on the outside and I have to do these sort of in a cross pattern um, following basically the reverse of how it was put together. Um, apparently according to the workshop manual. So uh, I'm gonna do that, loosen these off. Hopefully these ones on the outside that have gone a bit rusty come off without too much fuss. And then I should be able to just lift the head off, hopefully, and uh, get a look into our uh, barrel in, and our cylinder. Right, this has gone really loose now, so I think I'm good just to whip the rest of the bolts out in whatever order. Right, I think that that should be everything, so I should be okay now to uh, take the plugs out. You can actually see part of the thread has come out with it. That's nasty. That is not good. Cock. So I've got the head off and there's quite a lot of carbon buildup as you can see. It's not the end of the world, I can clean most of that off quite easily. Um, and in the other cylinder there is actually a little bit of dirt in there that I dropped down the intake manifold when I was taking that off. Um, but yeah, the bore of the barrels looks nice so I think I can actually keep these. There doesn't seem to be any sort of gouging or scratching or anything. I'm not sure yet on the piston rings, I might need to replace them. But uh, they're not really expensive so it's not a big issue. So unfortunately, even though the uh, bores are pretty much perfect, uh, there's a little bit of dirt in there, but there's no scratching, no gouging, nothing like that. The uh, cylinders, same can't be said for them. So uh, you can see here on both of them, there's quite a lot of pitting around here. And uh, this wasn't really visible until I took the, uh, until I started scraping some of the carbon off. So they're pretty worn, 
they'd probably be perfectly fine if I uh, put them back in. It's not a high horsepower engine or anything like that. So I could probably get away with just sticking them back in, maybe sanding it off or putting it in a lathe even, going a bit extreme and, and facing it off again, um, just to reuse these if I really wanted to. But I don't really need to. This is a 1500 and I've been looking for an excuse to upgrade to a 1600 anyway. So uh, I managed to find a pretty good deal on some very almost new, partly used um, mile pistons and barrels which are 1600cc, so they're slightly bigger bore. Um, they go straight into the 1500 heads and, and uh, the, the uh, crankcase, and uh, should be a straight swap. And they will increase it up to a 1600, so we get an extra 100ccs, which is not that much. It might give me a little bit of a torque or a, or a power increase. Not really sure how noticeable it's gonna be, but it's better than nothing, and uh, it's a good solution, and like I say, I've been wanting to do it for a little while anyway, so I thought I'd go for it. So as you can see, we've torn into the head even further. We've now got the valves out um, and all the springs and the retainers and everything. So uh, I'm not really sure if these are, if it's crucial that these go back in the same place, but just in case I bagged them up and, and labeled them so they can go back exactly where they came from. Um, it's pretty easy to do. We uh, ended up making, my dad ended up helping me and we made this uh, just out of a bit of old scrap oak, drilled a hole through it and uh, just super glued it to another bit that we could use to push it down. Cause I don't actually have a uh, valve spring um, compressor or anything like that. So made use that and then just used a big uh, clamp from over there. My dad's a carpenter so we've got lots of uh, bits like that laying around. So it's now just a case of going through the head and giving it a good clean. I've got some uh, degrease and WD-40. I'm just going to go through that basically and try and get as much of the carbon off them the inside as possible and then go around the outside and just clean it up as much as possible so that when it goes back together it's nice and clean. I do plan on, when I get my new barrels, um, painting them black so I'll have the aluminium head with the black barrels and then the aluminium body, you can't see at the minute, the, the engine's asleep to keep, keep sawdust off of it whilst my dad uses the workshop. So uh, yeah, I'll clean up the case, but it'll essentially look like this and it'll go aluminium, nice and not shiny, but better than this, um, black, and then back to aluminium again. And then the heater shroud, if you remember the fan shroud, that'll be painted black as well, um, just to clean it up a little bit. This engine's not a forever engine. This is not gonna stay. Um, I don't think it's probably going to be replaced by either a V6 or if I get my way uh, a V8 if I can find the right gearbox basically to handle the power in the UK because they're quite tricky to find in the UK. So for that reason I'm not really that fussed about uh, sort of making this engine last forever and ever and ever. It will just be a backup engine um, eventually anyway and like I say maybe a Honda V6 or an LS would be ideal um, but I don't really think many people have done that in the UK but just just because the parts are just not available like they are in the States. Um, so if any of you guys over in the States want to sort of uh, you know, ship a LS and maybe a, a, a Weddell gearbox my way, that, feel free. That, I, I mean, I won't mind, I'll, I'll happily take it. I've got, I'll store it for you, it's, it's fine, it's fine. Right, so I got the head uh, a lot cleaner now. I got most of the carbon off the inside and it uh, turns out easiest way to do this is after a bit of degreaser, grab a Dremel with a, uh, a brass wire wheel in it and uh, it seemed to fetch that off a treat. So as you can see under here, it's also pitted just like the pistons were. There's uh, quite a lot of uh, niceness on there. See, in an ideal world, this would all be perfectly smooth, but um, unfortunately it's not. Uh, it will run in this state, and this is only a single port head, so I'm not really that worried about it. Maybe in the future I'll upgrade to dual port heads, and it won't be an issue anymore. Um, but failing that, it's, like I said, it's not a forever engine, so uh, she'll run, and uh, see how it goes. <laughs> it's not exactly difficult to uh, take the heads off to clean it out if it ever does get like down on power because of carbon buildup. So I don't really think it'll be that much of an issue. What I am gonna do though whilst I'm here, and I've got everything out still, I'm gonna uh, just clean the carbon off of these uh, valves because on the uh, bottom of these they're pretty filthy. So I'll get these cleaned up as well. Um, and then I think that should be it.
Right, so now that's all nice and clean, uh, I'm going to tackle the spark plug hole. So this is the one that's uh, missing uh, quite a lot of thread. Uh, you can't really see very well. Let's see, get a torch in there. Um, sort of see, compare that to that one, you can actually see some thread in there. Uh, this one, there's just like nothing. Um, so what I've done is I've picked up this uh, spark plug repair kit. They're not like heli coils, they're like solid steel inserts. Um, so hopefully these will be a little bit stronger than heli coils. I know that heli coils, people use them on these engines perfectly fine with no issues. So I don't really have any doubts that this is going to work perfectly fine. Um, so I'm just going to basically run this tap through the hole. I don't think I'll need to drill it out any bigger because it's uh, just soft head, hard tool. I'm hoping that I can just go straight in, but it's an M14. And this will screw in and then that will let the spark plug screw into the insert. Um, and then I'll just lock tight this in so it doesn't come out, it doesn't back out when you're trying to take this out. And it should be good. So it is the next day now. Um, I managed to get this hole tapped out. So as you can see, that one's a little bit bigger than this one. I didn't have to drill this out in the end. Um, so I just ran the tap straight through it and uh, it's now tapped out correctly to the size of these. The only trouble is um, I don't have any Loctite here. So I do have some red Loctite, well it's not mine, but um, my dad's got some red Loctite. And uh, as you can see here, it's from 1982. So it's 36 years old and uh, we did do a test last night, it's actually still sat over here. Um, put some thread lock on here and uh, I actually might have got it. It takes a while to cure, but this might have actually got it. I think it has. So maybe we do have some thread lock. It just takes a little bit longer than, uh, than 45 minutes to cure. So yeah, decent. So that means I can use some of this thread lock in the um, insert. That's basically just stop it from unscrewing like this with the uh, with the spark plug because we don't want to pull them both out. Uh, this wants to stay, the insert wants to stay in the engine and the spark plug wants to be the only part that comes out. And yeah, that should be that. So I've got to find which of these is the right size. I think it's this one, I did measure it. So this one will be the right size to go in there. Um, I've cleaned off and deburred the other side of the hole. So in there, it's nice and clean now. And uh, it is the next day now, which is why some of my stuff is uh, under a sheet and something came in the mail. So this is my 1600 um, barrels and pistons. And these are, like I said, they are, they are used, but they were supposed to be in excellent condition. And uh, aside from a little bit of carbon buildup, um, you can see somebody's cleaned up one of them and uh, they all look perfectly fine. There's no pitting, nothing that I can see from the surface. Um, and I don't doubt these are going to be perfect. The only thing I need to check is that the piston rings are gapped correctly for the barrels. So I'm hoping that whoever took these off kept them with the barrels that they came out of um, so that they're matched up still. And uh, if that's the case, hopefully they are gapped correctly for, uh, for the barrels. If not, I might have to get a new set of piston rings and uh, gap them again just to make sure that they're nice and, and uh, all good. The uh, interesting thing is, I did notice um, with my old barrels and pistons, the piston rings on here, there's about a four mil gap. I did measure it. And the piston rings are far, far too small for the piston that's on there. Now these are 83.46 oversized, um, slight, ever so slightly oversized pistons. So what I think has happened is somebody's rebuilt this engine at some point and uh, they might have bought the 83.46 mil um, pistons and the stock 1500 which I believe are just 83 mil um, rods, uh, not rods, uh, piston rings and they've not correctly gapped them for here. Basically they've just chucked it together and it, it ran but it smoked like hell. So I'm hoping they should be a little bit better than they were. So all that's left to do now is um, I'm still cleaning off my valves so I didn't get nearly any of the carbon off with the, with the Dremel so I've ended up putting these in degreaser overnight. Um, also got a little spray bottom filled out with some degreaser because that makes life a little bit easier. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and clean these off, clean this off, and uh, then we can start throwing the engine back together, or at least throwing this side of the engine back together.
So I've gone ahead and stuck the uh, second size uh, insert in there and done the spark plug all the way. And as you can see on the back now, uh, this plug comes through here and the insert is the perfect length so no modification is needed to that. It's just a case now of uh, lock tightening that insert in so that it won't come out um, when we unscrew the plug and uh, we should be good to go. So I'm just going to give the uh, thread in there a little spray with some brake cleaner. Try and get some in there just, just to uh, give the Loctite the best chance possible of sticking. And I'm also just going to give the uh, insert a little bit of a brake cleaner as well. So I'm just going to uh, put the insert onto the spark plug like that. Grab some of this uh, vintage Loctite from the 80s. And it obviously works because it's Loctite with the lid on. I'll just give that a bit of a squeeze around here. Not too much that it's going to spill over into the other threads though. And uh, I'm just going to screw it into the head. I'm not going to do it up too tight, just as tight as I can do it with a uh, with my hand on this uh, extension here, just because it's usually tight enough for spark plugs and uh, I don't want to go too mental with it. Uh, so you can see here it's not pushed anything over and no Loctite is, is spilled onto the uh, actual spark plug thread so hopefully we've not Loctited the spark plug into the insert, that would be bad. Um, so yeah I'm just going to leave this basically next couple of days it will cure and when we heat it up as well when the engine's going. Um, that will that will heat it up a lot, and uh, that should definitely set it. Uh, so that shouldn't come out now. So that is where we're going to leave it for today, guys. Uh, so we've got quite a lot done, quite a lot of cleaning. Um, unfortunately, a large part of this is going to be cleaning stuff because it's old and it's dirty. Um, but yeah, we got the a lot of stuff cleaned that we need to get cleaned. Uh, we got our new barrels and pistons, which I'm really excited about. Got the spark plug hole repaired, that was a big job. We'll see how these inserts hold up, but it was it was definitely an important one. So now that that's done, all that's left to do is uh, basically just finish off cleaning up the head, get the valves in there and make sure the valve seats are nice and clean and polished. Um, probably reseat them, rebuild the engine with 1600 um, pistons and barrels. That's already now to go in. We can throw back together um, one side of the engine and then it's just onto the other side. Um, and then that side, is just gonna be basically rinse and repeat, same sort of process, nothing that interesting. I probably won't show you guys much of it, um, but I will definitely show you when I replace that exhaust stud that snapped off in uh, the one of the first videos, uh, because that's gonna be quite a big job, um, or quite a tricky job. Fortunately, I've got quite a lot of experience fixing like snapped off bolts and studs and things like that, just over the years, um, working on projects and stuff with my dad, repairing bikes and cars and all sorts of things. So um, that shouldn't really be too much of a problem. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.